Today we are talking about um, how to buy TV ads like you buy digital ads. Finally, in the 21st century, we have this capability and we're going to do it through a medium called connected TV. So we're going to get into what connected TV is, you know, where the opportunity it lies with connected TV um, and uh, some how you can basically leverage it um, in your digital marketing mix. Uh, we've got the perfect person to present this today. He is a, an account manager here at Web Mechanics, and he is a, a secret weapon on several of our key accounts. Um, and he's been digging deep into the world of connected TV and how to leverage these platforms um, in, in our clients' campaigns. And he's been at the forefront of launching these campaigns for our clients. Um, so he knows all about the platforms. He's been in the weeds. And he's going to uh, help help us talk through um, how we can take advantage of this and how we can potentially dip our toe in the water. So Jack Street, welcome to the Growth Clinic. Well, thank you, Jared. I appreciate the uh, intro. That's uh, a lot to live up to, and I hope I can do that today. A uh, little bit of background on me before I start. I've been in web mechanics for about a year and a half now. Uh, prior to this, I'd been in CTV, OTT, and television had been my job for five years. Um, so when I moved to web mechanics, I was really excited to hear that they had not yet launched into the OTT CTV platforms. And that became my goal from day one. And uh, excited to say we've officially starting in December of this year, we've launched our first uh, platform. Like we've actually gone live with the with the platforms and really excited to see, to show you what the capabilities are and where we can go from here on out moving forward with CTV. Yeah, and Jack, we're super excited to have you and your knowledge has been invaluable in helping our clients really leverage the platform. Um, so I know you have a presentation, um, Jack, if you want to fire that up. Um, while Jack's pulling that up, um, drop in the chat. Um, I'm just curious, what's your favorite TV commercial? If you had to name one, is it like the Budweiser Frog? Um, just to get our creative juices flowing, like, like if you had to name one TV commercial that stood the test of time for you, what was it? Jack, do you have a favorite TV commercial? Uh, I've had a lot over the years. I mean, I'm partial to the ones I put on TV. Um, <laughs> I had a I had a couple Nordic track uh, Nordic track ads that I had offered a Super Bowl spot. Wasn't able to get that one, but right now my favorite is the Amazon commercial with the dad in the snow globe. If you've seen that one, yeah, I think I've seen that one. That one's great. Yeah, yeah. For me, it's um uh the i mean geico always does a good job they're always pretty funny um old spice i think they kind of broke the mold in terms of what you can do in tv advertising um but there's also if, if you ever see those like really emotional commercials out of korea they're usually advertising life insurance or something like that i bet those commercials really pull because they like pull at the heartstrings and like make you feel really sad and make you feel really emotional and then it's like yeah. oh i should probably buy life insurance <laughs> or whatever they're usually it's something like that right um so it's kind of a different shade of it usually we think about commercials as being funny and being lively but there's also like the emotional ones that really tug at you so yeah yeah like those two yeah i love them got up berries and cream oh my god yes kayla berries and cream is a classic um nothing has thought that for me that's it's pretty that's pretty well up there yeah I, i'd have to say that's probably top three for me too um for those of you that haven't seen it, I'll, I'll dig it up while, while Jack's looking around, uh, running, going through the deck. Um, it's uh, definitely a classic. Um, anything playing on humor? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if it's humorous, it like like catches you. So there, there's definitely strength in humor and advertising, which isn't the topic of this conversation, but um, that's good. So Jack, um, why don't you take us through, uh, talk us through how we can get started with CTV and, and where the opportunities lie? Absolutely. I'm excited to do so. So I guess the, the agenda today, what is OTT? What is CTV? What is the difference? Why CTV? Um, who are the top players in the, in, in this uh, space right now? And we'll talk to, and we'll end up with how to buy and what you can do if you're interested in looking forward to moving into this at some point over the next couple of weeks. Um, so let's start, I guess, with what is CTV? Uh, essentially, it's a it's connected TV, a type of a media which allows us to advertise in premium television spots without the need to set up television advertising. Different. The reason this is such a benefit is. For the most part, instead of having to go through the long process of getting your ads approved by uh, CBS, NBC, or ABC, any of those major programming networks, you have easy access to these television programs, which is a much more streamlined process to get into those into that inventory. Um, it allows for more specific retargeting. Traditional TV does not. Uh, in order to buy on television, 
you need to buy either a station time or a day part. And with CTV, all you need to do is get is reach out to a vendor of some sort, say what station you want to be on, say what program specifically you want to be in. And it doesn't matter if you're if your program is airing at some if someone's watching it at 1 a.m. Eastern Standard Time or 4 p.m. Pacific Time, you'll see you'll still be in that inventory. Whereas with traditional TV, you have to pick I want X I want X program on USA at the 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. time slot. CTV is a lot more valuable in, in the ability to fix its time ranges. Um, it also allows you to hit your audience directly in the exact programs. So like I said before, you're able now to really target your people as opposed to looking into the programs. And that's a benefit that you, that you didn't have in traditional TV. And we can also pinpoint exact interests. You're looking for military. You don't need to go and run an MRI report to find what channels they're watching. You just know you're just able to insert into a platform and say, "I want these military. I want these parents, etc." And yeah. yeah, that's the benefits of CTV compared to regular that, TV. That's huge. Yeah, the fact that you can like say, "Like I want this type of demographic segment." You know, I'm not just looking for anybody that watches these programs. I'm watch, looking for these particular segments of people. You know, that's um. I think that's a huge differentiator for oh, you know, making it accessible. It certainly is. When I was buying television uh, as a TV buyer, I would have to buy a, I would have to go to the network to ask what percentage of your audience is military. And then they'd have to give me ah, maybe 25%, depending on what it is. No, now I know I'm getting it. I'm saying I want 25% of my inventory to be military. It can be done. That's huge. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Any questions on this before I move on? I do see some people, some questions in the chat. I'm going to move this to the other side. Yep. Yeah. If any uh, questions come up, Jack, I'll make sure to call them out. So, all right. Uh, sounds good. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. All right. So, what are the benefits to uh, compare to other digital platform and what is CTV not the best for? Well, for CTV, if you're looking, you're looking to get low CPMs and high audience impressions. That's one of the biggest pros there. It's great for cultivating and generating new leads. Um, and the benefit here is some vendors, and I'll talk about these a little bit later, have less competitive market space, which allows to higher access to their quality inventory. Um, a lot of the a lot of the inventory is done through second and third party partners. And what that does is it allows them all to have their own unique inventory for each uh, each show. So if you want to buy on Apple TV and you buy through a, a third party or a second party vendor, they'll have unique inventory that even that other second party inventory dealers won't have. So it's all about sourcing out and finding those people specifically. Um, some of the cons that you do, it's not great as a down funnel metric. So if you're looking for something to lead directly to a conversion, you already have someone who's a hot lead, CTV may not be the best for you. It's usually best geared as a top of funnel to mid funnel awareness play that can then convert into leads. Um, and then the the other cons there is uh, pending, pending the platform, leads can, there is a difficulty at attributing sometimes. Um, some vendors are a lot better at this than others and I'll explain why, one of, why we chose one of our partners um, for specifically for their attribution process. Um, but some that it really depends on what you pay for. Some platforms are great, some platforms not so great. And if you're only buying a five, if you're intentionally just buying a five dollar CPM, you're you're not you're not going to get a, a a high a high quality attribution program that you might get from a Roku or a much larger platform that is going to promise and deliver on attribution and uh, reporting. Gotcha. So yeah, if I wanted to, um, basically, so if I wanted to crack open a whole new audience segment, you know, and build awareness with them and get them engaged, um, and get them into the top of my funnel, so um, you know, I can mm -hmm. ultimately start to nurture them, you know, CTV could be a good option. Absolutely. And if you were to do that, I would definitely recommend spending a little more upfront, just because that way you have more access to the reporting to really find out where your audience is. And once you have that, once you have those knowledge of, oh, my audience watches uh, Family Guy or something, then you can target through other platforms that you, 
specifically to get that program. And that's one of the benefits that you learn that you really have with this platform is you can take your learnings that you took, you got on Hulu and apply them to a second party vendor. Or you can apply them to other, other platforms. Yep. Whereas through Facebook and other digital means that might not always be an option. Yeah, for sure. So one thing I mentioned earlier, CTV versus OTT, is there a difference? Yes and no. Essentially they're two parts of the same bucket. Um, OTT, it refers to tablets, phones, laptops, and desktops. That's how this, that's how they're served, the ads are served. Um, CTV refers to smart TV, video game consoles, Amazon Roku devices. Uh, it's just a delivery system. The ultimate difference here is OTT can go a little bit further down funnel than CTV does. But aside from a platform delivery service, most buyers, um, OT, most buyers of OTT group these two together. It's just, do you want to see your platform on just televisions? Do you want to see them on tablets and phones, and laptops, or do you want to see them on both? And what does really, OTT stand for? Over the top. Over the top. Okay. Gotcha. So it's CT, uh, connected TV and then OTT over the top. Um, and basically it's the additional layering of all of these platforms. Okay. Gotcha. Makes sense. So not too much of a difference, but just a delivery metric. And I do use those terms kind of interchangeably just because they pretty much are when you get into the platform and the buying stage. Okay. So why CTV? So I have some, uh, I have some um, exciting CTV stats uh, for you. OTT ge generally offers benefits of CV, much lower barriers to entry. This one right here, is definitely, I don't know how many of you have ever run TV before. Um, this one can be a big pain. Uh, when I was running NBC and CBS, this would usually, we would usually have to carry out about a two, three week process for approvals. Um, and eventually I got CBS to agree to run my spots well, solely on the, solely by saying, well, we got NBC to run it. <laughs> but probably it, weighed heavily in that decision. <laughs> it was, CT, some of these higher level networks have a very difficult barriers to entry, especially the approval process. CTV does not have that. It's much lower, much quicker, much more, much less painstaking, which is one of the huge benefits that you have over TTV or regular TV. Um, if you're looking for the younger aged Americans, 18 to 34, 90% of us use access their television content through the internet. Um, in the United States, about 92% of all homes have some sort of CTV in them. Um, and then, oh, last year in advertising spend, there was over $18 billion spent. And every year we've seen a drop off, we call it cord cutting into te in television. By the end of this year, we project another, an additional 89 million Americans how will have cut the cord away from TV and gone just to CTV and app streaming by the end of the year. Uh, previously, that number was around, previously, a couple of years ago, this number was upwards of 300 million people who are watching um, American, who are watching on TV. Now it's down below 150,000 for the first time since the 50s. So this is definitely something to be considered of. Most people are moving to CTV and away from cable, away from a dish, away from, uh, away from satellite. So moving forward, this is going to be an even bigger platform than it already is. Moving on, I just wanted to present here some of the top performers um, with their projected growth into at least uh, 2024. Now, there is one caveat here I do want to include. The top performer at the moment is not ad insertable yet but they will be by the end, by, by 2024. I think we all know who that one is. <laughs> um, but across the, across, the, uh, across the country, we're seeing um, each of these, we're seeing at least four platforms by the end of 2024 who will have over 100 million viewers. And then two additional platforms that are going to have over 25 million. Um, most of them already have at least these top four all have at least 100 million, uh, 100 million viewers per year. Um, and then these two, ESPN Plus, which is growing rapidly in Apple TV, those are, um, those are recent entrants into the game. They're already eclipsing the 
the 20 million mark each year. And with ESPN recently having signed the NHL, as well as having exclusive rights to um, other exclusive rights to most NCAA platforms, this number actually could jump up a little bit more significantly over the coming years. Any questions on this part? Um, because I, and I do want you to remember some of these because I'm going to be asking, I'm going to give you, give you a little bit of a quiz in a little bit. All right, so let's talk some frequently asked questions. Please, if you have any questions, feel free to chime in here because I know there are going to be a lot and I only went with the high level ones for now. Uh, TV is expensive. Do I need a massive budget? No. Um, CTV is very affordable. I recently, uh, my first CTV campaign, I ran on $5,000 through Hulu. Um, and then it was, I was able to get a full couple month test out of that. So that was one very quick entry into OTT. And that's where I first learned it. Caveat, uh, first party vendors do, some of them do have a minimum investment requirement. When I ran Roku for the first time, Roku has a $50,000 um, minimum investment, but you get reporting for the, you get to run through the entire quarter, access to premium inventory, their full packet of reporting. And when you get from that is, um, specifics of interest behaviors, program watches. So you're paying for the report and the learnings in addition to actually getting the inventory. So Jack, those are usually quarterly minimums. Um, so Roku does quarterly minimums. Um, it depends on the vet and vendor. Uh, I've not run Apple TV myself, so I can't speak to that one. Uh -huh. um, but I know they do ha also have minimum investment requirements. And Roku does it so that you know you're getting at least a quarter's worth of value out of it. And generally, that's about what you would want th two months to three months for a test anyway. Yeah. Um, what's a good fly? And that leads into our next question, Jared. Thank you. What's a good flight length for CTV? Usually about two months we recommend, three months lets us optimize a little bit more, but the first month you're just gonna be learning where is my audience? What am I doing? What are they doing? What, am I, what are they looking for? And then the second month, uh, optimizations, and then any month past that we can do optimizations, learnings, and implement new tests, A-B tests, different shows, AP diff tests, different plat AP tests, different platform programs. Um, if you want to try news out, that would be something that you would try in month two or three. Yep. I don't know where my audience lives or watches. So this can be a very big problem if you go with a first or a second party vendor. The option here is a third party vendor. What they are is a specialist who has a specific set of inventory and they'll help you set up a plan and pull out a media flight and a uh, and a campaign wrap up to really get your first feet into the waters of, C of CTV OTT. I would run, not recommend running a second or first party if you've never done this before, just because it's difficult to make those calls and you can lose a lot of, you can get caught up in a lot of the, uh, and I did this in one of my early campaigns, you can get caught up in a lot of the name brand, like wanting to do Hulu, wanting to do the things that everyone knows, instead of going for a smaller platform like Tubi, which generally promotes a CPMs less than $15. So those are the things that you would, that you have to learn. And I would recommend for the first startup to try and either work with a third party vendor or someone who's worked, who's done this before. Um, and then yeah. another. So it sounds like, um, you know, you don't want to just go for the cream of the crop inventory or, or ones that are going to be the most expensive that everyone knows, right? You want to think about, you know, where's your audience actually hanging out on their free time? Like what programs mm -hmm. are they watching and what's the best mix of like what you can pay for that audience versus, um, you know, you kind of the, the relevance and quality, right? Exactly. Yep. And I'll get into what the difference between first, second, and third party vendors are in a later slide. Um, so if you have any questions on that, I'll, uh, I'll address them. Cool. And then another question that comes up often, I don't have money for a professional TV shoot. Can I create CTV creatives with a small budget? Absolutely. Um, UGC is fantastic here. Uh, I'm actually, we've actually, I've actually run this in the past for another client and at another agency. And UGC can perform just as well as a professional shot done by a creative agency for television. All you need for the UGC is just to make sure the video is shot at 1080p or higher, 
and a spot length of 15 seconds, 30 seconds, and 60 seconds. Yeah, so so UGC stands for user generated content. So the idea is it's content that feels authentically created by just another user of, of a platform, right? So maybe like an example would be like you're on Instagram and scrolling and somebody's like, hey, have you checked out this cool new app yet? Let me show it to you on my phone, right? There are tons of ads out there like that now um, because they feel realistic and they feel authentic, right? Um, versus um, you know, having to go through and do a big production and storyboard everything you know you can get straight to the point which is like hey this is an ad but you know it's a little more authentic because it's like some person like you actually showing you um you know this thing right that's kind of the idea right no exactly yeah and then yeah. Oops, sorry jared there you go and then i guess the last question we would have here is where do i start because a lot of this seems very overbearing a lot of stuff to digest and really have to figure out it for yourself. So that's why we're here today, to help you if you're interested, to take you through a process of how to buy, what to buy, and what to look out for. All right, so let's talk about ad targeting and creation. Uh, because CTV allows for such intricate layering of behaviors, you want to make model your creative after that. If you're looking to, mo uh, to market to professionals, uh, nurses, doctors, uh, military members, make sure they're in their uniform, what they're wearing. Um, and like Jared said earlier, the best benefit of CTV is targeting. You can specifically target their people's jobs, their interests. Um, and then if you're in the B2C space, CTV is fantastic for you because you can target this specifically towards sales. Um, and then it's also very good for B2B as well. As long as you're not as in, in as long as you're not in a very, very intricate, uh, as long as you're not in a very, very intricate uh, system like healthcare cell, pro one of my clients, for instance, is in the healthcare payers and providers for, uh, space. This wouldn't be a good buy for them because they have a very small audience targeting specifically to organizations that need to hit a specific number of uh, number of uh, criteria. Yeah. For so, them, it would not work. But yeah. for other people, even B2Bs, I've seen Asana do very well here. I've seen other companies like that, CRMs for work really well to sell. Um, so it just depends on your market space. Yeah. So if your target addressable uh, market is very small, or if you have a very, very niche audience that you market to, it might be hard to um, find the programs to advertise on that reach the right folks in the right quantities, right? They're mm -hmm. kind of going to be diluted. It's going to be hard to like make CTV work for that. But if you're like, like you said, like, like um, Gong, is a great example. If you sell to salespeople, if you sell to B2B salespeople, there's a lot of programs you can reach them on, right? So it's mm -hmm. going to be a lot easier to leverage a platform like CTV to get in front of them, especially if you're, I mean, you don't have to be running Super Bowl ads like Gong to do that. I would not recommend running a Super Bowl ad. Those things are expensive. <laughs> I'll do that. I'm sure everyone knows that, but. Yeah. Not to start. <laughs> All right. So how to buy CTV. Uh, there really are three ways to buy directly through the platform, a DSP, this is what we call a second second party vendor, and through a third party vendor. Uh, directly through the platform, they'll give you access to the lowest possible CPMs because you're not paying a secondary source and they'll have absolute cream of the crop inventory. You wanna buy a, you wanna buy on HBO plot, if you wanna be a plot, buy on HBO Max and you wanna get insertion into House of Dragon, you would probably need to go directly through the platform. You wanna buy, but again, that does require lead times and it is a little bit more reliant on the vendors at the vendors at that uh, agency. But most of the time you'll be working through the network executives directly. Uh, DSP. This is very similar to how you would buy on Google ads or Facebook, but just for CTV. Essentially it's a digital service platform. You are able to buy across the net um, no need to pay with no middleman to pay. The difference here is you're buying it yourself. So if I were to buy through a DSP, I'm not going to have any recommendations from either the network or through a third party vendor. I have to buy these myself. And generally speaking, this isn't something we recommend for someone on their first venture into CTV or OTT. Uh, reason being, you don't really have all that access to information. Once you have run through another vendor and know where your audience lives, what, they, what they're looking for, this is a great option. But early on in your, in your CTV journey, 
it does run into a couple, you can run into hiccups pretty quickly. And then finally, there's through a third party vendor, which is what Web Mechanics is currently doing. We're working with a third party partner who's helping us design cross platform uh, campaigns to hit multiple vendors, to hit, uh, to hit Hulu, to make sure we hit other, other platforms. And they'll work with us to build out a, pl a platform. One of the benefits here is you have cross platform, you get the cross platform access that you get through a DSP, but you also get the benefits of the interaction with a human being that you would get at a network directly. Ultimately, this are, these two are great starting points, either directly through a platform or through a third party vendor. Um, but they all have they all have benefits. They all have, they all have some uh, they all have some cons as well. Third party vendors, you do you will have to pay a little bit more because you're also paying for the service of another human and their platform. Any questions on the three ways to buy? Before I move on. They all seem pretty straightforward. All right, perfect. So what are the, some of the things to keep an eye out for? Well, being a lot of mostly digital marketers, there are some things that are different from our space that exist in the TV sphere that would be unique here. So campaign lead times. Typically when we shut something off in Facebook or on G ads, the shutoff's almost immediate. CTV and TV, TV um, have longer lead times. CT, CTV can usually take about a day to two days to fully pull something off. Television, if you're doing standard broadcast cable, they can. it usually takes about five days to pull an ad off TV. So the good news is CTV is much more like digital. The bad news is there's still that lead time that it takes to pull things out of the platform. Ad quality. Again, you'll need a video asset of at least 180p quality, if not higher. Um, it's not necessarily a, ha a hang up, but it's definitely something to keep your eye on. Reach. Um, now this is another one to pay attention to. Uh, it drastically differs by platform and even two vendors who carry the same platform may not have access to the same inventory and thus the same, the same reach. So our say, if we had run with, we have two partners that we potentially have been looking into, Mountain and, uh, Mountain and uh, TV Scientific. We knew going in that they had, they may have carried the same inventory, but TV Scientific had a slightly bigger audience. Hence why I decided to go with that partner. And then another one, this one is gonna sound dumb to a lot of people, but it doesn't really, it's not something you think about until you get burned by it, and I have. Not all CTV vendors count impressions as one-to-one. -one. I've worked with C, uh, one platform that does this is CBS. They count what's called double account impressions. So they assume that every time someone watches a program, two people are gonna be watching. So it'd be either you or your, uh, it would be you or your partner or someone or a kid and a parent. They assume at least two, two eyeballs. Now, not all vendors do this. And the only one I've ever seen run into is from CBS. But just something to be aware of when you look, when you go to uh, look into this with, if you look into uh, CTV is to make sure that's on your, uh, on your watch list. EJ says four eyeballs, technically. You're right. <laughs> it definitely is. It's. That's right. <sighs> yeah. But that is interesting that um, see like some of those vendors kind of like fudge their numbers a little bit by saying, well, let's just assume that two people are watching it on average. Right. I mean, maybe they have some data behind that. But. It, the data, the data is mostly right. I'll be honest. The most most of the time, the average is it levels out that it probably is correct. Yeah. The problem is you can't guarantee that it always is. And for television numbers, the ratings the reason that ratings always seem so low compared to what they actually are is they always account for only one person watching. Right. Whereas. Yeah, it's just something to be on the lookout for. And it's, I've only ever seen it with one platform, but um, that's something, you, uh, but when you get burned by that, it's something you always look out for. And I've asked every vendor that I've had a conversation with and they've always told me, no, we don't do that. That's dumb. Why are you asking? Yeah. Interesting. 100% true. That is 100% true, AJ. Uh, so EJ is going to start a platform that counts impressions by eyeball and make a like, poor folks get shown. That's right. That's right. That so is a gonna... smart, that is a smart plan. Yeah. 
And then if you uh, get really woo-woo with it, you can add in your third eye, and then all of a sudden you're... <laughs> we won't go there. <laughs> all right. Yeah, right. So now I have a little bit of a... Now I have a little bit of a game. Not a game, but a challenge. So who are the top... Uh, add insertable platforms. I'm actually going to reach out to the audience and ask you guys to type in or to talk, call out, who do you think are the top players in the field? What do you guys think? Throw it up in the I'm chat. give you a couple minutes. Who are the big players? Mentioned a couple of these, but. Hulu, Google, Roku. Anyone else? Any guesses? YouTube TV? Good one. That's a good one. Yep. So far, I see two or three on the list. So we're at two or three. I'll give you that. Yep. All right, cool. Well, uh, HBO Max, Hulu, Roku. Yep. These are some good ones. Yeah. All right. I did see a couple in here, so if no one, if I don't get any more answers in the next ten seconds, I'll move on to show you who the top, who the top pl platforms are. That's a good one. That is a very good one. Quickly nice. rising peacock platform. <laughs> Boom! Paramount Plus. That's another, another good one. one. Yeah. All right. Need five, four, three. <laughs> To any last answers? No. Okay. All right. So the Disney Plus bundle, really, this is three separate platforms, but all of these are bought through Disney. So they've kind of grouped them together. You can buy separately, but the, right now, this is the biggest ad insertable platform if you combine all three into one. Um, Hulu, Disney, and ESPN are all owned by Disney. So right now, if you want to buy any of these, you have to go through. The house of mouse <laughs> but i did see someone say i did see someone a couple of people say hulu you are correct that is a that is a big name player apple tv this is another major player um in the ctv field right now uh probably the second biggest uh or the biggest ad insertable individual program um but the other ones are all the disney bundle is a little bigger if you combine all their platforms into one prime video this one has actually grown significantly over the past couple of months, um, actually past year or so. Going back to about 2019, this wasn't one of the big ones, but now it's actually completely jumped up the scale and has made, and has some options for um, for ad insertion as well as uh, regular as well as regular uh, you pay to watch. Yeah, I know. Prime is the one that always used to get me too. I'm not going to yeah. lie. I always forgot about that one. I've always wanted to test this one. This one's never made it to my desk. YouTube TV. I did see Hell that it. a couple of times. Yep. And that is absolutely a fantastic call. They are quickly growing as well. Actually, most of these platforms are growing, but they've grown, gained a significant audience since the pandemic. We keep going. Peacock, another good call. Um, that one has actually kind of, has seen some upticks recently. A big platform, that a big uh, program they were recently able to secure. They have rights to Notre Dame's uh, football games, Notre Dame's college football games, as well as um, WWE premium live events. So they're, they're pay-per-views. And those have massive reaches. Usually you're going to see something over a million impressions per show which is really exciting with Peacock, as well as their own premium programming. I think the new Halloween movie is on there as well. So <laughs> all that is ad insertable. And then Paramount Plus, another one that people had mentioned a couple times. This one is absolutely one of the bigger um, ad insertable platforms, and it's grown pretty significantly over the past year or so since its launch. Now, there are some smaller ones, and I think we do need to talk about them. There is one in here that has an asterisk. The only reason it's an asterisk is because it's not ad insertable yet. Netflix is going to jump up to be in those premium players as soon as its ads become accessible. That is something we can accept. That is something we need to 
just to understand, but it's definitely something that in the future will be a big player and it will change the escape of CTV. But for the moment, it's still in this other platforms we should look to consider in the future. I did see some people say Roku as well. That's another one that's really exciting. Uh, but I have a couple on here that I don't think anyone mentioned and I do want to address specifically. These two here, Tubo, uh, Tubi and Pluto. Very, they're smaller platforms with large NFL broadcasts on Paramount Plus or ESPN Plus. NF, so good question, David. Uh, NFL broadcasts, you can through Paramount. You cannot through ESPN Plus. <laughs> ESPN Plus is, you need to have a direct for ESPN Plus, they need to have a direct contract with the, the vendor. Paramount Plus does, uh, I believe, uh, what's the other one? CBSI also does. Um, but ESPN does not currently. I know they've been working on potentially doing it. And you can insert for, at, similarly, you can insert through Prime Video for Thursday night games. That's good to know. And then these two right here, Tubi and Pluto, they are... Um, Smaller platforms, but they have very large, um, they have very large inventories. Kind of the way I've seen them presented in the past, uh, they're kind of like Netflix, but without inserts currently. These two, one of the benefits here to these two is um, I've actually seen these platforms produce sub ten dollar CPMs if you target them right during the right time of year. So those are two platforms that you definitely should consider in a larger buy if you're putting in more expensive placements. Hallmark movies now. I think in the, this time of year, everyone's watching at least one Hallmark movie. And if you're not, I by don't choice know. or otherwise. Yeah. <laughs> now, one of the great things about Hallmark movies now is you can watch those movies. You can insert during the December year or in July when we do Christmas in July. Um, cheaper option here, access to premium inventory. That's a definitely a platform that is I've seen a lot of success with in the past. When I used to run Hallmark for TV for uh, cable television, we could generally receive three million impressions from a single spot for less than twenty thousand dollars, and that's yeah. for thirty seconds. And that's really exciting for like a premium launch movie. Discovery Plus, you would have access to the entire Discovery Network. De another one to consider. And then we'll talk Sling, Crackle, and Roku. Kind of group them together. There are some of the, there are more of the medium-sized uh, vendors. What, why these vendors are really great though is each of them offers premium reporting. Uh, if you're looking to get into an audience for the first time, uh, Roku and Sling, though they do have higher investment levels, are definitely worth exploring because then you'll learn exactly where your audience is, what they're doing, what they're looking for. I ran this previously. I ran a Roku campaign for Penn State and my previous agency. Uh, we didn't really know what we were looking for. So I asked the client, hey, can I, um, we asked the client to test uh, Roku. And then once we got into the platform, once the campaign was completed, they broke down every single platform, every single genre, everything that worked. And we actually found that the most successful, um, the most successful program for us was adult animation, like Family Guy, South Park. And we were able to take those learnings elsewhere and then we were able to kill it. So you pay a little bit more upfront for Roku, but if you do, they'll give you the access and the knowledge to apply it everywhere. And then you can really target your audience. Yes. Yeah, and any questions on any of the, pro the platforms we just talked about? Otherwise, I'll keep rolling into uh, some of the things that Web Mechanics is doing as well. All right, perfect. So you're interested in CTV and say you want to start today. How can you do it? Well, our part, our, right now, our current, uh, our current agency has a partnership with TV Scientific. They're a third party vendor. We've launched our first CTV campaign with them. So excited to see how those results pan out. Um, and this is how, this is the, uh, an insight into how they would select inventory. This first one here, premium reach, that's them just building out the platform. That's them just building out the, uh, the audience for you with all the platforms attached. So in this case, we're getting, we would see NBC, ABC, Tubi, Newsy, 
et cetera. The second one, premium bundles here, I would go in there and I would work with them to buy more specific targeting. Like I would insert here and start buying out different platforms. Say I don't like their mix here. I want to add Apple TV. I could do that here in this second option. Higher CPMs because we are accessing more premium inventory, but definitely a benefit there. And then there's the private where I just outright ignore any uh, recommendations and I go in there and I would buy specific buy what my client wants. So that would be our next step there. And uh, I would buy there and I would pick exactly what I would want. Uh, I would pick Hulu, I would pick et cetera. And then finally, this, this is the reporting dashboard. This is a mock-up. There's no, the, none of this data is tied to anything just, so, just to be perfectly transparent. But um, this is a mocked up dashboard of what we can expect from this client. We would see the total impressions by network. We'd see the network streaming how many impression count by app name, we'd see the networks giving us impressions, site visit, visit rate, your cost per visit, CPM, everything you could need, including leads, calls, anything that we can work in there and track, we can put into this platform and we can have them report on. Yeah, that's cool. I like that you can um, get down to the purchase data. I think that's huge. I think that that's worth like pointing out is, you know, with, with TV, like you kind of had to, stick your finger in the air traditionally and say, we turn TV on and sales happen, right? But here you can measure down to the cost per purchase. Um, yeah. So that's pretty significant. Yeah, and another thing that's awesome here is, I've not seen this in another platform, TV return on ad spend. So what is your return on your ad spend for each of these uh, platforms? So you can learn which ones work best for you and where we should go moving forward so you can yeah. take these apply in the future campaigns. and i see those columns to the right of that you can track um those other goals right like if you have a yeah it looks like an app install objective you can do that you can track leads you can track calls so literally like anything you could traditionally track in a google ads or facebook ads it seems tools like tv scientific are making it possible to now do that with exactly TV. exactly they definitely are and it just depends on how much you're willing to give them in terms of tracking options and pixeling the site um, aside from that, we can get down as deep as anything on Google ads. Uh, I will say about five years ago, this level of integration was pretty much impossible. Now, just through a third party vendor, it's, it's there. So I'm excited to see where the technology continues to grow. Yeah, for sure. And, um, you know, the last 10 minutes here, Jack, um, I was curious, so I found this page on the TV scientific site. Um, I think one of the really amazing, um, components of CTV is the targeting, right? It's like mm -hmm. not just the targeting, but how it interacts with what you're doing on the web. So I was wondering if you may maybe walk through some of these different targeting segments they have and kind of talk talk through like what some of the ninja things we can do with, with CTV in our you know, absolutely. web mix. So, yeah. Absolutely. So CTV targeting segments, I'll go through each of these here. Uh, your online behavioral, what you're searching for, what you're looking for online. Offline behavioral, what do you do in your off time? Are you a hiker? Are you a, uh, are you really into baseball? Do you, do you do chess? Things like that. We can target each of those and they have those options. Interest-based, similar to the above. Um, demographic, we can do age. And let me go back to that previous sec, previous slide because I actually have an example here. Um, I have age, gender, household income, targeting, things like that. I can target down to those levels um, with that. Geography. I can target by state, I can target by a zip code, I can target by um, by country. If you're looking to go outside the United States, it's possible. Not sure if that's of interest to anyone, but it is a possibility here. And then customized segments. We can create, the, they can create, if you work directly with them, you can work to create custom audiences. Um, that's not something we did for our initial foray, but that's something I do know was an option and I wanted to pursue moving forward. Um, so that's definitely, uh, that's definitely some options they have. Um, they also have pages like mentioned here. They have uh, web to tar web to TV retargeting. So you can set up campaign and then place your pixel. Once your pixels live, your visitors who go to your um, who go to your site can actually um, be pulled into the target for TV Scientific. So that's, that's another option. That's huge. And and like you you imagine if you're driving people to your site and then they go watch they're watching their tv and they see an ad for like 
they were just researching you like a couple of days ago. Like that's got to blow some people's minds, right? It's like, whoa, these guys advertise. Um, I just think that that component is so cool. Yeah, definitely. That's it's fantastic what they can do. And I will be honest, not all vendors can do this. I've done I've I know there are certain first party vendors who don't have the capability. So the fact that uh, I think this is one of the reasons why we decided to move forward with this uh, vendor as a partner. Some yeah. Partner. One weird trick to impress your CEO. <laughs> if you're if you're marketing for your company, install you know TV scientific or whatever, you know, and and get this retargeting up and running. And then you know your CEO is going to be in that audience that they're checking the checking the website. You know, CEOs are normally impressed when they see their ads everywhere, but if you they see your ad on TV, then you're going to be getting some kudos. So and I think this might be a hack to to getting more marketing budget in 2023. <laughs> oh yeah, I've, when I used to run uh, TV, one of the biggest sellers that the CEO had for us was, oh, I saw our ad in the, yep. uh, in the Utah. They were based at Utah, Utah, Utah State game. I was so excited; it made me so happy. So, yeah, you're 100 percent right on that, Jared. If you if they see your ad on TV, they're gonna know a lot of people are seeing it. Yep. Call. And then first party audience activation, um, onboard your value. You can onboard uh, your your prospects or customers using a, a list, and then we can uh, they can target it there. So just like that, integration, just like any other CRM. That's also huge, right? Like if you know, like I mean, let's just use an e-commerce example. Let's say you know the your customer bought widget A. You have a list of customers who bought widget A. And you know that those customers are most likely to buy widget B. You can create an ad be like, hey, did you know that we now have widget B? And then run it on TV to all those customers, right? So yeah, I think that's just yeah, that's just amazing. To build off that, Jared, one thing that they are capable of doing, say you have a list of people who bought widget A and people who bought, bought widget B, we can upload a separate creative for each of them. So the people who bought widget A will only see widget B. People who bought widget B will only see widget A. Wow. So those are opportunities as well. Yeah, I think this this right here, what you just showed, Jack, is, is the gold, right? This is like why this is so exciting is because finally it allows you to integrate the TV channel with what you're doing on the web um, yeah. and your data, right? You, 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 all the data that you're collecting, you can now leverage that, get in front of these people with, I mean, TV messages are very, you know, I mean, people are sitting there, they're watching their program. So you have that chance to make that impression on video that you wouldn't otherwise have with a banner ad or something like that. So they can be highly impactful. Um, so yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm impressed. I think the there's a lot of promise in this channel for sure. For sure. Um, and I think you've, you've laid it out really beautifully. All right, well, thank you. I appreciate it, uh, Jarrett. Um, I think that's everything I have though. Anyone have any questions for me or? Any questions? Who's going to run a CTV test now? I know I want to. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> no pressure, Caleb. Um, cool. Well, Jack, thank you. This was fantastic. Um, you know, I, I think I got a really good digest of the platforms and how they work, and um, you know, really the the tactical things we can do with them to to lift all our other channels with this. So I, th I think um, you know, I'm excited to see where, where CTV goes um, after watching the presentation. Um, a couple of quick things before we wrap. Um, the recording of this will be uh, live in one to two business days on YouTube and our website. So if you want to um, uh, redigest some of the information Jack shared here today, um, you'll be able to uh, do that there. Um, and then next week we have uh, what will likely be our final growth clinic for the year. Um, it's going to be on how to calculate your allowable cost per acquisition. So if you want to take control of your marketing in 2023 and know exactly what you can spend to acquire a lead or a customer or whatever that objective that you're, you're shooting for is, we're going to do the math and show you exactly how you can do that. Um, take that to your CEO and own your results in 2023. And, and uh, it'll be a fun one. And with that, guys, thank you so much for joining. Um, I you know, hope you guys are gearing up for some exciting holidays and we will see you on the last one next week on Wednesday.